Hello again, it's time to have a look at another project I've been working on. Um, these things seem to stack up in the winter when I have time to work on them. This is a set of TrainSim controllers for TrainSim Classic to replicate the look and feel of a Class 43 HST, uh, which quite a few people will be familiar with. And essentially what we have here are four keyboard emulators. This whole thing started off last year, getting towards Christmas, when I decided to watch a lot more train cab videos, and um, that led to another thing here, which is, that's another project I'll be talking about separately with an Arduino, but it led to me watching those videos and then wanting to play train sim again. So I um, played a bit with the keyboard, but not a lot of fun. So I had a look at what controllers were available, and the rail driver's been out, but that's not really very accurate. Um, there's a company making commercially available similar controllers to these two, uh, but they're very expensive. So I decided to make my own with my own designs and then added these two, which, as far as I know, nobody else sells anything similar or has made anything similar. And um, these are completely my own designs. Um, like I say, these are basically keyboard emulators. So they just replicate keystrokes. They will work with any game on any computer, not just Train Sim Classic. If it can take keystrokes to control a train or anything else, then it, it'll work with them. So from right to left, we have this box, which has the reverser, the master key, horn, and the AWS uh, cancel or reset switch. Throttle module, which has currently has a five notch uh, sort of gate in it, brake with a seven notch and they're interchangeable and on the left we have all the auxiliary buttons um, including wipers at the top, emergency stop, headlights, guard call and the DVD or DSD reset. You can see on these two that they have these thumb wheels and originally Originally the setup was for the train to be selected with these thumb wheels. But as I started doing that, it became apparent that I just don't have enough inputs on the Arduino, and I'll stick up an, an image now of what it actually looked like with the cables plugged in. I don't have enough, and I was finding out that with certain trains, like the Class 90 and the Class 91, um, the commands for this module and this module aren't the same as others. So these needed changing as well. So these would need thumb wheels. And I still don't have enough inputs. So I have moved to a serial communication system, which is what these little black circles are at the moment. They are, in fact, lights. What I'll do is let's get this first module plugged in. Now that's booted up. You can see the light went red and uh, briefly and now has gone blue. That means it's active. We have a valid selection made. You probably can't see this very well, but I'll put in some B-roll. This says class 37 at the minute. Uh, brake 7 and throttle 5. That's the number of notches per module. What I'll do is just bump this up to 43. Uh, and in fact, there are, there are a lot of different options I have here. Moving to class 43, that now replicates the class 43 with all four modules. These are all off at the moment. Um, but what I'll do is let's plug them in one by one and I'll show you what happens there. So all four of these have an individual connection to USB so that I can take them out and change them if I want to. And one of the ideas that I have potentially for the future is to have something like this which is a different module for a class 158 or 159. This is a project that hasn't worked too well but um, there's still potential for the future. As you can see, these now have red lights. This means they're powered, but they don't have any connection to this box here, which is the train selector. And they will be connected with these uh, three and a half millimeter cables. So let me plug them in. So there we go. As you can see, three blue lights, that means we are all connected with the class 43 and we have various different lights like the the guard light and turn on the wipers and such so let's go through a quick train prep 
Now, usually when you start a class 43, in this game it starts with step 2 for the brakes, and we're obviously not in step 2. So I have a little calibration buttons on the side here where I can just press that, put it as release, and we'll put it back into step 2. First thing to do, let's pan down. First thing is the master key. Put that into reverse. We can't hear it, I've turned the sound down, but the AWS warning was on. Into engine only and into forward. Then we want to turn tail lights off, the marker lights on, and then we'll click this twice to turn the headlights on. And if this keyboard will allow it, we can flip around and see what we have. This is the Armstrong Powerhouse um, Class 43 uh, VP185 pack, so East Midlands trains. This will be the train that I used to ride to work every day. Um, I kind of miss them. I really like the uh, the Class 43, so that's why I've focused on it. So let's go back into the cab. We've done the lights. That's all good. What we want to do is turn off the... Uh, oh, this train doesn't have DRA. Well, I can't turn off the DRA because this train doesn't have it, but that will be that button. This train doesn't have ATP. It does have a driver vigilance device, which um, I can turn on but you can't hear it. That's what this button is for at the moment. Now initially I didn't know how the, the DVD stuff worked. I thought it was a button or a plunger they were pressing somewhere because that's what it sounded like in the videos, the cab videos. Of course it's not, it's the pedal. But I can't necessarily have a pedal here, so I have this big plunger, which it makes the right sound. Having said that, I do have a pedal. I have the one that came with my um, Caesar scanner, uh, and that is actually right here on this USB cable. Uh, it's under the desk. So I have a USB port here that's ready to uh, be installed and provide that with the button. The only thing that's stopping me is I want the ability to set it as normally open or normally closed. So normally open, the same as this, to cancel the DVD, you press the button down. But that's not how a real pedal works. A real pedal, you release the pedal to cancel and reset the DVD. So um, I want to be able to do that. And I haven't worked out how to do it yet. So I haven't installed the USB port. This is now, let's see if I can turn the sound up a little. Probably can't hear through the microphone that I'm wearing. But we can actually start moving this train. So we are in forward. We are releasing the brakes and this actually goes all the way to emergency the way this works is it has a multiplier system so each train so actually there's a potentiometer in here and it has a certain range between this point and this point that's then mapped to the number of notches so in this case it's seven which actually makes eight positions that then provides uh, the different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's then multiplied by an arbitrary number, whichever one works, it's calculated, to provide the on time for the button pushes. So that's calculated, so it needs to press the, um, I think it's the semicolon in this case, or is it the... Um, the hyphen, not the hyphen, the apostrophe. Uh, a number of, for a certain amount of time, sorry, to, to be able to um, move this as far as it needs to go. That's calculated with a multiplier. It's a little complicated. And that allows me to then throw this all away and it catches up because it's already doing the calculations of how far this has moved. Anyway, releasing the brakes. And it's the same for this, so I can move this straight to, well, if I wanted to, I can move this straight from there to max, and it will catch up. And we can see the amps rising. This is winter, so it's not going to go for full throttle straight away. We are moving very slowly. The, the VP185 tends to take a little while to 
<laughs> spin up compared to the Valenta. Much more of a fan of the Valenta engine. I'm sure we're going to get some wheel slip if I put this into full throttle, but let's see what happens. And oh, we don't want the speed actually. Put that down to zero. And yeah, I have a number of uh, Armstrong powerhouse packs on this. It's running as 4K, um, decent settings, getting between 60 and 80 frames per second, which is is okay. I mean, this is a very old game at heart, um, but it, it does okay. Right, we're now in the Class 91, and I've tweaked the camera phone position a little bit, so you should be able to see a little bit better. Um, 91 down here, which um, I've done a few takes where I kept forgetting to change it from 43. But we're going to do a setup on this train next. It starts in step 3, so I preset it to step 3 beforehand. Same as before. Turn the key. Just into reverse. Clear the AWS warning, and then into forward. The timing on this is also dependent; uh, is different per train in some cases. Uh, some need the button to be held down a lot longer. Uh, the 37, I think, is a good example of that. I'm just going to turn the cab lights on because it's quite dark in here, and we'll go around and look at the lights. In the 91, these are a bit complicated. So, at the moment, the headlight switch, which is the the H. Um, H key doesn't do headlights. The left marker, uh, left tail button does headlights, and then we have the exterior lights done by the rotation, which it's hard to get away from. Um, that's fine. There are no markers on this, so we've done the light setup. If we just have a look outside. We should have lights. No problem. Um, we're back in the same location. We're still in Ipswich. So, turn off the cab lights. We're going to turn off the DRA. I'm not going to turn the DVD on on this because I don't think I quite have the button mapped right to cancel it. So, it would it would just trigger. Um, we're in step three, we're in forward. Again, same two-tone horn on the buttons here, no problem. And just give the guard call a quick buzz and let's get moving. Help fire remove the uh, release the brakes, wouldn't it? I'll put the instrument lights on. Now I'll just explain with the instrument lights on this train. There's something I need to work on because the lights have three positions. They have off, bright, and dim. Uh, what they don't have is exactly what this shows here, which is whoop, an extra off position. If that was the case, I'd be fine. But they only have three positions. You go to bright, and then if you want to go back to dim, you have to go back to, um, which is a little bit annoying. So I need to implement a counter system that basically goes round in a loop. It goes up one, back to centre, down one, back to centre, and then you loop again. We'll see how that works. Now on this train, we're still using five notches, but there isn't a notch system shown on the screen its percentage. Uh, so this just goes 20% each time and that was calculated to work out which multiplier I needed to use to get to 20% each time. And it took quite a bit of fine tuning. It's much much higher on the 91 than it is on the 90, which is a bit weird. But that's just the way it is with the game. And we are off and running, keeping within the 15 mile an hour speed limit. So we're going to try and not speed, but we're also going to try 
uh, a 159 now, and I'll show you how it works on that. I'm just cutting in some B-roll here of me changing over the notches. I didn't want to move the camera between switching from the 91 to the 159. And after changing the notches, I'm now back with the Class 159. This is also um, an Armstrong powerhouse one. And we're going to go through the setup for this. So, first things first, we don't have the key on this one. So, we're in essentially neutral, straight to forward, and clear the AWS. We're already in step four, so we now have, um, like you see just about down here. Uh, break 4 and throttle 7, so the 7 has just moved from there to there, and a separate 4 in here. This is in um, full service already, no problem. We can bring that down to whichever step we want. That might need a little bit of tweaking, but um, yeah, that's fine. And we've got the same controls as normal, so we can call the guard, we can honk the horn, we can turn on the headlights into day mode and we've also got the wiper switch there which is just as fast but we're in forward that's fine the DRA isn't active at the moment so we don't need to touch that but let's go into we're still in IP switch let's release and let's get going very quick response from this train as you can see the uh, this block would very much replicate the uh, throttle of the 159. This thing picks up speed quite quickly. Again, we don't really want to be speeding if we can avoid it. For some reason I get slightly lower frame rates with this train, I think it might just be the amount of detail in it. And we are away. And that's really, I'll just, let's just put the brakes on so you can see it. Two full service and we come to a stop and also you can activate the emergency there if you wish that's really it for the demonstrations that's the three three main trains I'm gonna be driving on this and um, yeah as I go along I'll add some more I have a 37 and um, class 8 to work on 47 probably class 50 etc you know going from there but um, yeah lots of options as far as different uh, notches for these and uh, yeah I intend to expand this a bit more so thanks for watching